Welcome back. We got some questions that still need to be answered, Mark. That's right. About Tassie. About a few things, but we'll start in Tassie. Um, I guess now that we actually have a full understanding of what happened to the Jeep, mm -hmm. we can probably tell them what happened, yep. how much it cost, why yep. did it happen, the ins and outs of it. Yeah, so basically it got to that point in the trip and we were kind of off life a little bit. The Jeep's gone away for however long, um, so bad on our part, but we, we just kind of didn't record much and therefore didn't tell much of a story to finish it off. So Not that, to mention like that first, first part of the trip was uh, great fun, a lot of fun, yep. uh, but we packed a lot into that first half of the trip. Yep. So to actually sit down and, and enjoy a couple pretty nice campsites, as you saw in that last episode, it was kind of nice. Yeah, um, and it was kind of boring. Like we didn't think, yeah. even if we did film some of this, it'd be how's it going to fit in? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it didn't it didn't match the typical storyline of hard track, hard track, hard. Yeah. Track. So anyway, so the Jeep. So on the thousand dollar track, it basically stretched the timing chains. Um, I think the Jeep has four timing chains, or that uh, Pentastar motor. I, I don't quite know. Three that. or four. Three or four. I remember they didn't have enough in Australia. Yeah, so. there wasn't enough to. Um, fix just if it was just that um so stretch the timing change continue to drive the vehicle um silly on my part if i could go back again i would have stopped driving at waratah and got it towed from there that would have halved the repair bill um but yeah we got to launceston so I drove at 200k yeah that's right on some terrible hilly roads like the vehicle was gutless probably yeah i or even the patrol was like Still getting warm, like the, yeah. It's tassie, tassie terrain, it's mountainous, yeah. That's it's right. Windy. Um, so anyway, we drove it to Launceston, um, went to the dealership. They said they put about a liter of oil in, in it, so um, you did check the oil, check the oil multiple times was, so. on, on the thousand dollar track when you were thinking things are look feeling rattly, not quite right. Yeah. You checked it multiple times. One thing I didn't check though is I didn't check the dipstick after they had put oil in. Right. Maybe, you know, maybe then it was well past the full mark. And yeah. Maybe they know that's where it's got to be or something. I don't know. Anyway, just got to Launceston and then the Jeep got to that caravan park and the Jeep just went to start it up and just kind of went and just had nothing. There was no loud bang. It wasn't while I was driving. It was just as I just went to start it. Last, um, that was it. Last bit. So that was the. And that's Jordan's. He's riding shotgun in the Jeep at the time. And yeah. He's, he's actually quite switched on to mechanic, more than us, I'd say. And that's happened to him before. It's in happened to him, yeah, in a different vehicle. And yeah. he's like, yep, yeah, there's your time and chain, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we towed you up to the campsite and then and everything unfolded from there. But yeah. So, when, like I just said, neither of us are mechanics. Anything we've done, we've learned ourselves. We're not qualified mechanics, but... It's our Obviously, understanding. otherwise we probably would have stopped there and had it. Maybe. I think so. Um, so... A, st a stretch timing chain and then resulting in a, in a snap timing chain. Your timing chain drives between your crank, uh, crank, crankshaft and camshaft. Yep. Um, crankshaft driving your pistons and your camshaft keeping your valves in line and, uh, in time with everything, hence the name timing chain or timing belt. When that snaps, everything's out of time. Pistons are smashed into your valves and your valves are either bent or broken and in turn you don't have a motor that works. Um, yep. And yeah, so... So that, that leads to... Yeah, at that point, it was, right, I need a new engine. Well, no, well, no, no. they actually, they could tear it down. That's right. And go through it bit by bit and replace it, and it could have come out cheaper, but it was a big... They were thinking... It was a big what if. They were thinking about on par, but yeah. yeah. So, um, but it could have been worse. Labor's the killer there. Yeah, exactly. If you right. were to do this in your shed yourself, yep. um, you would have been better off. Oh, if it happened at home. Yeah. My word. Um... But the fact is, we were on an island off yep. of Australia, oh, yeah. off of the Australian mainland, and we yep. didn't have another option, really. Yeah. So, decided to leave it there, have the dealership, um, which, I mean, the Launceston dealership there, Yeah, long, long they, they were amazing. Um, they, they squeezed it in short notice, and they were already backlogged for months. Initially, when I said, oh, can you look at it today, they were like, uh, look, maybe in four or five weeks we'll have a look at it, and then I explain the situation that we're just travelling through. Yeah, and then there, and, and then they're like, okay, bring it in, and then they spend like two hours on it, charge me a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, to, right. To, for all I that. didn't know that's cheap. Yeah. Um. So 
straight up amazing. So then I felt confident to leave it there. And in the past, I've always been a bit nervous going to dealerships. Um, Especially when you're nowhere near it. Yeah. When you come back home. Yeah. Um, you, and it's not like you can just cruise down there after work and yeah. be like, oh, what's happening with it? Yeah. So the dealership, they sourced another engine out of a... So that was a 2013 uh, Pentastar engine or 3.6 engine. So they, those are in a lot of different cries. Those Jeeps, all different makes and models. Um, so they sourced one or had one available straight away out of a Grand Cherokee, same year. Because I think you want to try and match that as close as possible. And I didn't want it to be older because there was some problems with the older engines. Um, so same year. Only had forty thousand Ks or what, thirty thirty two thousand Ks or something like that. What did your What did the Jeep have on it? The Jeep had ninety nine thousand. So you you know seventy Ks better off. Yeah. So sixty or seventy. So yeah. So they got that in. They said, look, you'd be looking at around ten grand. Um, and I was like, well, shit. Um, didn't have much options. It didn't have many <laughs> options. I. It was going to cost a lot to get home. Um, and we did look at car trailers. Yeah, which and it would have been illegal anyway because it was heavy. The patrol is three ton or three and a half ton. Three and a half ton. Three and a half. Sure. But still, heavy duty, big trailer. Because we thought, well, a car trailer, we'll no, use that yeah, again. We've, we've, we've had to tow a Jeep before. We've yeah, it back from Alice, which so once again. Probably I wasn't wasn't against buying a trailer because nah. it's something you'll use again one day. Yeah, definitely. But it was just too much of a head fuck um, as far as well leg- legalities yeah, and yeah, stuff and like that. I so. get in the. There was only two seats in yours. If that was a four-seater... Yeah, so if the cops pulled us over, there would have been two people sitting on a, in on a the overloaded trailer yeah. in the car. Yeah, or in the, yeah, in the Jeep still. So but it, it yeah. wasn't an option. No. Unless you guys were still going to fly home. Yeah. Um, so yeah, left. They just decided to say, stuff it, fix it, and I'll get rid of it. Um, so the end bill? That. So it was... Like they said, they, they were like, look, we've banked up for months, so it's not gonna happen quickly. I didn't care. I was coming into a busy season at work, so I was working six days a week, so I couldn't possibly get down to Tassie. Um, I needed two or three days to go and collect yeah. it, so yeah, a couple of months um, suited me fine anyway, so there was no stress there. So it was about three or four months later. Yeah. I uh, flew back and picked it up. Uh, there was a few other things they decided to change because they like, oh, this looks a bit worn, so we're not gonna... Um, Put it all back together. And yeah, use that. So we, they did buy in a few other things. I can't remember what they were now. I think it was like pulleys and stuff like that. Um, and it came back at 10,200 or, yeah, just over 10 grand. So pretty pretty much on par with what they quoted, um, which was amazing going especially, into the job. And if you saw the way I delivered the Jeep too. They did see it, the way. Yeah, if you saw any fresh, of the episodes. Fresh out of the $1,000 track, straight into their workshop. So imagine being a mechanic working on a four-wheel drive that <laughs> just <poor> done <laughs> two or three of Tassie's hardest four-wheel drive tracks and hasn't had a single bit of cleaning done to it. Engine bay, a yeah. mess. Yeah, it was, yeah. And they couldn't obviously, I would have loved to drive it to the car wash before, before taking it there, but. So, yeah, to yeah, for could. them to fix that and on as quoted, um, everything like that. They actually had it professionally detailed. They had it, their detailer wash it a couple of times. Um, so it was actually really clean when it, when I got it. So Because when I went back to Tassie, I thought, oh, well, I've got to kill some time before I get on the boat. Wash the I'll go to the time. car wash for an hour. And I went there and looked under there with the pressure cleaner and I was like, ah, oh, they've actually got all, oh, the, all the hidden spots. Bucks, <laughs> yeah, all the hidden spots that you would generally be like, oh, I bet they didn't clean. Yeah, here. right. So it was great. Um, so that's the Jeep. So... That's the repair cost. Um, so it's um, it's now sold. So you know that's sold now with an engine in it that's only done thirty two thousand k. Yeah, so. I guess the only downside, not a downside, but someone buying a vehicle that's had an engine swap, you're always a little bit hesitant. Oh, for sure. Um, but, but that's why I did it at the dealership. Exactly. That's where you got a whole invoice it was warranty. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, you'd be much better yeah. off buying with that sort of reassurance. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of why I did it and didn't do it in the shed at home. Yeah. And, and it may have just came out cheaper, but then selling it could be an Oh, you're not a mechanic and you've just, yeah, you know, I've got to drive down the road and it's going to go. Pop. Yeah, there's no warranty with, yeah. with that. Yeah, so. I never thought about that. Good move. Um, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's the cheap. That's the cheap. Cheap sort of. done and cheap dusted. Gone for this for this point anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so then that brings us to the Defender U. Yeah, there was a couple of vehicles. Well, there was was there a couple of vehicles beforehand? You didn't just go out and buy. No, I was shopping around on Gumtree on Marketplace for almost two days. Um, well, looking, we looking at anything kind of under 10 grand or anything that I've been looking at in the past. Um, so old Land Cruisers, old like Defenders, obviously. Um, even I've been looking at you know newer four-wheel drives as well as a new daily, and I was even looking at those. So I was, I was looking at everything um, pretty much Tassie wide, but particularly in Launceston. Um, we did, yeah, had a look at a couple other vehicles. One of them was an old... 75? 75, that's right. 75 Land Cruiser. Mate. Just a U. I reckon there's more U. oil outside of the, outside of the engine it, than it was in there. The underside of that, every single thing that was meant to have oil in it okay, was, was leaking. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was clutch fluid. Yeah, it was like everything. Yeah. yeah. Every, like diff, transfer, gearbox, everything was leaking. It was so it's a good sign that there's oil in there. Exactly right. Um, so yeah, ended up going to look at the Defender. Um, the bloke was a champion. Uh, he was right into them, uh, as most Defender owners are, as you find out. Um, he owns seven or something? Yeah. He's got some in WA. Like, he's yeah. At, like, the nicest guy. Yep. Gee, like, you honestly couldn't have bought a vehicle off a better person. Yep. He knew that we had to go to SA, that was the aim anyway. Yeah. So he changed um, all the fluids. That's right. So the night before picking it, when I was like, yep, I'll do it, transferred the money. That night, he was up, I don't know, God knows what yeah. hour. And I, he, I just thought he was just changing the the engine oil. We get there the next morning. He's like, yeah, I've had the diffs changed. Bled Bre- all the brakes. Yeah. All the brake fluids and you. Yep. Like, yeah, crazy. So, uh, that, that made me feel a little bit more comfortable, but... He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't exactly confident it would get back. No, he wasn't. <laughs> But he did say it'd be a hell of a time. Yeah. And it was, by the looks of it. <laughs> it was. Um, but you know what threw me over the edge, though, was everyone was doubting that we'd do it, that I'd do it. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Stuff it. I don't think you think I'm going to do it. No. He didn't think I was going to do it. So stuff it. I'm going to buy it. I'm really glad you did. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I picked that up for just under 10 grand. Um, I've wanted one for a long time. Or I've just been looking, shopping around yeah, for a long I think, time. I think everyone loves the look of a Defender. Yeah. They're hugely popular as far as aesthetics go. Yep. Um, not only that, but they're solid front end. Exactly. And coil. The, and coil. And you, like this day and age, finding vehicles with them, are, they're becoming more and more limited. Yeah. Just because people like the comfort of an IFS vehicle. I mean, yeah. So if you want that combination, you're limited. Severely oh, limited. Yeah, big time. Um, you're going to sacrifice other things like comfort. Yeah. So yeah, pick that up. Obviously, didn't you know when you're generally buying a vehicle, you'd probably think about it long and hard for a couple of days. You would. You would look in. You'd ask for the most you know, history person. on it or something. Yeah. Um, but with this one, uh, took it for a short test drive. It felt fine. <laughs> but those little things that you don't look at when you're looking at a vehicle to buy, like how well the windows work or how well the doors open or close like those type of things like a couple of days after buying it all of a sudden those little things were stacking up and there was a lot of problems with that like you know just doors needed adjusting which you know i did um sort some of that out when i got it home but the biggest problem was driving it on the highway um it looks like a handful once we got back to back to melbourne and driving it back to sa so eight hours, pretty much driving at home. Uh, we were sitting on what 80, 85 k's an hour, pretty well, because it was just it was just so floaty. Um, as I got home, I realised the um, bull joints were just clogged out, absolutely rooted, nothing left. Yeah, this is just walking side to side. Yeah, like it I was, was behind you for quite a portion. It, it was a drive. struggle to keep it between the lines, yeah. honestly. So that, I thought you were like, and it was hot as well. Like it was January, it's middle of middle of summer. So in Tassie, you don't notice it. But when we got back here, yeah. that heat was just killing us. No AC. Motors sit right there. Sticking to those vinyl seats. Like, it was a bad time. It was beautiful. Um, the aircon in the patrol was fantastic. I'm sure it was, but <laughs> the story that I have is fantastic. <laughs> oh, we still got the same story. I, just live, I live in, in, in comfort. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that with the amount of rust that 
it had on it. It was just too much of a project that I was willing to get into at this time, like too busy with other things. Not only that, but you didn't have... Don't any, have a shed like this to you didn't have a, in, so... Didn't have another vehicle. Like, if you, it's all right to have a project, but... Yeah. It's nice to have that vehicle. You can That's still right. jump in and go, and down, go away. And go away. And, yeah. Um, when you... Yeah, it's a, probably a bit much to take on as you're only yeah. full. And you didn't know how long the Jeep was going to be. Yeah. Like, three or four months was probably not a bad turnaround. Yeah. But it could have been more. Yeah. So... But yeah, live with the defense. I had it for... Um, Six? Yeah, six months or so. Um, and I only ad- started advertising in those last couple, like month month and a half or something, did I actually say, right, no, nah, I'm going to sell it. And guess where it went back to? <laughs> the funniest thing, the dude calls me up. Yeah, looking at your Defender, just wondering, um, would it, do you think it would make it uh, back, uh, sorry, do you think it would make it um, driving to Tasmania? Do you reckon it would drive to Tasmania all right? Well, I'm yeah. like, well, it will do it because I drove it from there here. Um, Crazy. And I and I said to him, I'm like, I would not wish that drive upon anyone. So no, I'm going to say no. Do not do it. <laughs> Even if that means you're not going to buy it, then I've got to be honest here. It was a shit drive. So, um, but anyway, a bloke ended up flying over from Tassie, putting it on a truck and taking Take, it. So, taking it back to the motherland. Yeah, back to the God's country. Oh, yeah. So where it belongs, I think. Um, so that's the U. So that's sold now as well. That's gone. So yeah, just back on the U for a second. It's probably because you have been interested in a defender for a, for a fair time, like years. Um, to have the Ute, and obviously now you've all seen the the, the defender wagon. Yeah. The, the reason one one big reason, even if the defender Ute was in nicer shape with the less rust, and you know you could fix the bushes and fix the steering, or whatever. Yeah. You still didn't fit in it. Exactly right. And doing Nullarbor, doing yeah. Kimberley's, like you're not going to sit, you're, you're, you're tall, yeah. you're not going to sit in that car yeah. for 10 hours a day getting up to the north of Australia. It's that, just, that was the biggest thing. Yeah. Like, um, so in having said that, like it wasn't a complete wasted exercise. No, because you, you now know that, that that wasn't you, you wouldn't fit in it, you're not going to have that, it doesn't suit you. Yeah. So but the wagon... Yeah, well, defender owners will know that um, the seating position is shit house, but you can get extended rails to fix that. But they're useless in a ute. Obviously, you've got the bulkhead right behind you. So I looked at um, putting it, turning it into like a space cab, so you can then, you know, all of that kind of thing. You know, just to be yeah. able to, you know, live with this vehicle to keep it. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a big, big move. A lot of work to yeah. just fit in a car. Oh yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, at that point because I then I'd bought the green one because I knew I was going to sell the Jeep. Yeah. So I bought the green Defender. And at that point, I had four vehicles registered. I had a daily, got a daily as well. So there's four registered vehicles in the backyard um, and it was just too much. So I had to be like, right, Cold. I don't need two Defenders now. I've got to be smart here and sell some of these damn things. So, And to, to fund building the, defender, the, the green one up. That's it. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's, that's where the Defender that's you've, the, you've already. I think well, that's up to speed. There'll be probably more questions, other things we've missed, but yeah, if there is other questions on, on, those, on the end of that Tassie trip or, or anything more specific, feel free to just chuck yeah, them in the comments. Shoot them through. We do try and get back to them as um, often as we can. But yeah, a couple other things you want to address as well. Um, there has been a, a fair few comments about this old girl behind me. That's right, I was going to ask. What the, are we doing? The here? G60. It has been a ridiculously busy 18 months um we've both still got full-time jobs and um we've got to fund this obsession somehow so early in the new year um i'll be cracking into this i'm super pumped for it um even just lifting that just to free up some space for mark to work on his defender in here we lifted the cab as you might have seen in an episode onto the onto the gq chassis and just seeing it sitting up like that just got me super excited to get cracking into it. Yep. So you're early in the year. Um, it has been probably a little bit of a blessing in disguise because as you probably know, you sit on something and you dwell on something for a long time um, instead of getting straight into it. And you can think of different methods or different, um, different ways of maybe saving money or um, workload. Um, and I think it's probably worked in my favor. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, and I've spoken to a few professionals because um, I'm certainly not a professional in panel beating. Um, 
And yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of going down the line of using the GQ floor pan and firewall um, purely for uh, body mounts um, and also all the master cylinders, steering column, all these other mounts that mount off your firewall um, and then morphing the, um, the G60 panels around that. It seems to be getting less and less of a G60, but what I'm after effectively is uh, a seriously capable touring vehicle that with an old school look. With an old school look, yep. it's unique. There's nothing out there that, if this comes together, have my, is my head. This is an insane touring capable. Yeah, I'm sure people have done it before. Yeah, you don't um, see many. They definitely have done it, done the done the swap, but um, but it's not like putting um, a coil rear end in a, rear end in a seventy nine. No, you know, like yeah, no. It, but even just the actual touring setup, I want will be pretty unique if it comes together how I think it will. Um, but yeah, so that project still is on the go. Um, just needs some more time, like everyone and everything. Um, but yeah. Um. Because, I mean, at the same, in between all of that, we're still trying to get away as much as possible as well. That's right. So, Lucky enough, we can just load the vehicle up, drive away sort of thing. That's, yeah. That's the beauty about that. Um, now, last thing, what's, we well, still haven't finished the shed here. The, yeah, the shed's still an ongoing project as well. Yeah. Um, there's been a fair bit of interest in the in the build. They've seen, you know, every Aussie bloke loves to get in the shed and... and you know, tinker around so yep. people have been enjoying the the loft build it's a little bit different i'm a carpenter by trade so that is one site one um, trade that i can tell you well i think i can tell you how it should be done um mm -hmm. yeah and yeah so basically the sparky's done all the first fix in there so it's ready for jib rock um a few aircon pipes and whatever in the wall and and it can actually start to look like a, yeah. a proper room yep. and then um hopefully next year we will have it finished and we'll be doing these chats in front of the camera up in air there conditioning. in aircon. That'd be nice. Open bar. Yep. So yeah, that's pretty well it. Um, I think. Yeah. So yeah, that was. that's the wrap up. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, if not, we'll redo this. Yeah. And if you want to see more of these one on one or two on one, <laughs> um, little chats in the shed. Uh, yeah. Make sure you let us know below and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.